Welcome back. I hope you all had fun setting up your profiles. If you notice, mine's only got 30%, and the reason I wanted to point that out is because I don't want you to worry about yours not being 100%. There's a lot of reasons that this is true. Maybe you haven't created enough blogs yet. Um, for instance, I haven't set up any classes or added students, so that's another reason why mine's not full. That's not important, so don't worry about it. What we're going to do today is create our first blog. So on the home page, which is called the dashboard, you're going to click on create a new blog. It's a big pink button. Now when you get to the next screen, it's going to have a demo. And this demo was made by the Glogster team and they post it up so that you can kind of see the area you'll be working in, things you can do. You can even play around with the objects, move them around spin them if you would like. You could stretch them, you could shrink them. These are just um, a chance for you to play around with what they have to offer without making a whole blog and committing. So we're actually going to clear what they have and put a background wall over their wallpaper and start our own. So what I need you to all do first is to name your blog so that you can find it later. Especially if you're following along with me, it might be good to all have the same name. So we can maybe say sample one. This is going to be what we're going to use. When you guys create your own blog, you don't have to name it this and you don't have to do exactly the order that I do things in, but this will be something for you to refer to. Now what I'm going to do today is actually break it down into two sections. This first section is going to be your basic stuff. You're going to have a background, some graphics, some text, things that you would expect in a regular poster board. The next one's going to be advanced. That's going to be where we add images, embed videos, maybe some data like a Google form, and some sounds in the background. So to get started we need to delete what they have. So whenever you click on an image you get a toolbar. And the pink trash can will always be highlighted for easy access. So I'm just going to delete this image. And the rest is just a background, so we're going to cover it up. Before we do that, I'm going to introduce you to your new best friend and Glogster. This is a magnet tool. And on the magnet tool it has a list of everything that you can add inside of a Glog. And these were actually found on one of my Google drawings earlier in this site. So these kind of refer to anything that you can do, any of the possibilities. And we're actually going to start with wall because we need a wallpaper. Now if you look, you get two, two choices. The glog wall, which is going to be this background that we actually are decorating, and a page wall. And this is similar to how MySpace let you decorate your actual page, or how Blogger lets you decorate your page. That way your whole Web 2.0 tool is decorated and unique to you, not just the things that you're making in it. It's another way to express yourself. But we're going to focus on the glog wall. So, you can start off by adding a picture in the background. Like maybe you're doing one about your family vacation and you want your picture in the background. Or you're doing one about um, the science of photosynthesis and you want to have grass in the background. You took a picture of your backyard. Or you can use just a basic color. And my favorite is the templates that they create based on themes. So maybe I want to start in the retro theme. So I can click on it and they'll give me some options in the retro theme. So I like this one because I'm thinking I'm going to do mine on Web 2.0 tools and I want something that's colorful and fun but still that's not going to take away from what I'm going to talk about. For instance, if I was not doing something that took up a lot of knowledge and maybe I just wanted some more decorations, I might like something like this, which is really fun and crazy and cool, but if I have too many things on the page with that background, it will take away from everything that I'm trying to do. So I'm just going to click on one that I like. I think I like that original one. And every time you click on it, it previews to the right. And when you like it, you click Use It. As you can tell now, my background has changed to that. And one thing about the whole Glogster feel is that there's lots of menus and toolbars that you can use. When you're done with them, though, you have to exit out of them or they won't go away. So please make sure you exit out of them, and that will let you continue to edit onto your final project. Now let's add some text to this. Like Maybe I'm going to add a title to my blog. The beautiful thing now is when I click on text, it has retro highlighted already because it knows that I've already used something with the retro theme. So it helps you keep it as a cohesive project if you'd like. Maybe I want to look at something else. This random, if I click through I might find something I like as a background. Hmm, nothing I'm really liking for the background of my text. Maybe paper. What's really nice about these, if you're noticing, is that it's not just text, they're not just letters. They have things surrounding the letters, pictures surrounding the letters, and this might be hard to get on a regular poster because it would take more time for the students to draw them. 
So I'm going to keep looking and maybe I'll find something I like in Pop Rock. Because these are a little bit more fun and outlandish. I kind of like this one. Okay, so I'm going to pick that one. When I click Use It, I can watch it go from the area that it's previewing into my document directly. Again, exit out of your final menu, and then you can just drag and click this anywhere you want it. I want to stretch it out make it nice and big. Maybe I even want to tilt it a little bit. But I really want to change the font, and I want to change what's written here, because if I leave it post to yourself, it's not really specific. So that's where the edit button comes in handy. When you click the edit button, the whole screen goes gray and allows you to really focus in on the text. So I'm going to change this to my title of Web 2.0 Tools. And if I want to change the font, the text, the color, I can do all that here. So maybe I want to make this Lexia. No, that's too big. So maybe I want to make it just old fashioned. Still, I'm not quite in love with it. Maybe splurge. So I kind of like some of the other ones a little bit better. So I'm going to keep it there. And then when I'm done, I click OK and it takes me back to the whole screen. So as you can tell, it's that simple to add text. And one final thing we're going to add is maybe some graphics. So what's cool about the graphics here is that the graphics can be nice and normal, simple and easy, or they can be animated. So for instance, if I want an animated one, it's going to do some sort of action or move. Like this peace sign here, its fingers are going to move. I like that one, so I'm going to click Use It. It's going to go into my screen, and I'm going to exit out, and then I can move this wherever I want it to go. So this training so far has only covered getting a background, setting up some sort of text, and adding some graphics, which I could add more graphics if I'd like. So it's that simple. Now I want you to hold on and follow us to the next tutorial because we're going to have a tutorial where we add in the fun stuff, the stuff you can't see on a regular poster board, YouTube videos, maybe even some music, and um, a document so that your students can have everything in one place and they don't have to move around to other pages. So hold on tight and we'll see you in the next tutorial.